Here is me trying to learn 10 times faster by doing nothing. You see, I'm currently following an approach that I've learned from the internet's go-to expert for real productivity advice, who is none other than Stanford neuroscientist, Andrew Huberman. Andrew Huberman. Andrew Huberman. And some of his learning tips have made people say, why has that not been incorporated into our educational system? And speaking of the education system, currently I'm in the final year of my undergrad and it's definitely been a challenge to balance all the content with everything else in life. So that's why I want to test out this popular and scientifically grounded system that Andrew Huberman talks about for learning faster. And at the end, I'll let you know which parts I found the most useful. Okay, so if someone gave you the option of learning 10 times faster, you probably wouldn't mind. Well, the way that Huberman says we can actually achieve this is through a very sophisticated process called doing nothing. Okay, so that's not entirely wrong, but the more scientific name is called the gap effect. And here's it explained by the man himself. Anytime you're learning something, it pays to have random intervals in which you stop and do nothing. Okay, so I've been trying this out recently, and Huberman gives the rough number of doing around 30 of these for every, for every hour. But I felt like if I had to consciously count how many of these breaks I do, then that would end up being more distracting than it would be useful. And at the same time, I didn't want to use any of those apps that do this for you. I think there's some out there, but that seems like it's more complicated than it needs to be. So what I ended up doing was I would just keep working, working, working until I naturally like slowed down. And then I'll just take one of these 10 second breaks. And the thing is for me, and most likely you as well, is that these 10 second breaks is something we probably do unconsciously anyways. So it's not like we need to put in all this extra effort to force ourselves to take these little breaks. Now you know that staring out the window isn't always a bad thing. Now, I don't want to oversimplify things. These gap effects are just one part of the learning system that Huberman talks about. And altogether, they can help us learn much more quicker. And so the first step in this approach is get alert. And there's lots of ways of doing this, but one way Huberman recommends is taking around 25 deep breaths. Okay, on a serious note, I've been trying this out for some time now, and I honestly think that the effects aren't that noticeable for me, because if I'm tired, I'll just usually go for a walk or some exercise, because I feel like that's the best way for me at least, to become alert and actually focus on what I'm doing. But I can see how this can be helpful if it's like really late and you can't go out and exercise. So I guess it really depends on your own body clock and your own routine. The next step is get focused. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably know that focusing is a good thing. It will help us learn much quicker, but it's always so hard to do. And this is exactly why I found this little trick quite useful. Huberman says, pick a point in the room to stare at for around 30 to 60 seconds. He says you can blink, but try not to have any other thoughts and just try and focus on that one point until the time is up. Now, this has to be one of my favorite tips because it seems so simple, this one, but it actually works really well. And this is especially right after I stare at a point and then go straight to work. It's almost as if you can carry the focus between one thing and the other. And once I'm in the zone, Huberman recommends limiting each study session to a max of 90 minutes. And this is essentially because 90 minutes is about the maximum time that we can maintain intense focus for. And for me, the goal when I sit down is to do at least 60 minutes because I often lose focus. But now I know if that happens, I use it as an excuse to take one of those 10 second breaks that we mentioned before to kind of reset. Now, even after you finish studying, Huberman mentions there are things you can do to make sure you actually remember what you just learned. And he saw me falling asleep in the intro. That wasn't just for dramatic effect. Well, it kind of was, but it was also to show you the power of NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. And this involves things like meditation or napping for around 20 minutes. But personally, I find that I don't have that much time to rest after each study session. But luckily, Huberman says that even sitting there and doing nothing for one minute, but ideally five to 10, can have a similar effect as well. Now, I'll be honest, it's very hard to measure how effective this is in helping me study because there's just not many quantitative ways to go about measuring it. But one thing I've been doing this with is with physical skills. So learning kicks for Muay Thai or driving a particular route. I find that after practicing these physical movements, and then doing nothing, I find that this actually helps me remember them much better. But obviously the actual sleep that you get that night contributes to this as well. But basically for physical skills, I found this very helpful. And for mental skills like doing math or studying, I'm gonna keep testing this out and see how it works in the long run. And out of all of these steps, Huberman says that getting alert, getting focused, and sleep that night are the most essential steps. But as for how you go about each one, it obviously depends on your own style and routine. And personally for me, focusing on that one point to help me get focused and taking those 10 second breaks during my study sessions. Those were two of the things that I found the most helpful and something that I've implemented every day now. 
And if you're interested in the other study secrets I'm using at the moment, you may like this next one.